This is John's house, modest by most people's standards. Three bedrooms, single car garage, and a finished basement provide him everything he needs to live a happy life on Canada's West Coast. Well, that's what he thought. This is John. John's heating and hydro bills are through the roof. He knew his old furnace wasn't getting the job done, but he didn't know there was a whole set of other issues affecting the efficiency of his house. This is the hedge. And this is John's neighbor, Sam, on the other side of the hedge. Sam is tearing down his old house and is building a new one. Luckily for Sam, his community has adopted the BC Energy Step Code, offering him the chance to create a more energy efficient home and cut back his stack of bills. Canada's Climate Leadership Plan sets the goal that all new construction will be net zero energy ready by 2030. This means reducing the Canadian carbon footprint by reducing greenhouse emissions. It's about leaving our country in better shape than when we got it. Sam's new home features a very efficient building envelope with good quality windows and doors, a right-sized furnace, abundant fresh air, and plenty of insulation. As a key industry leader, Owens Corning is serious about providing energy-efficient leadership guidance. So, when John saw the Pink Panther on Sam's roofing and insulation materials, he paid even closer attention to what was going on across the hedge. So what is BC Step Code? The BC Energy Step Code is a provincial regulation that came into force in December 2017. Local governments can use it, if they wish, to require builders to meet a higher level of energy efficiency performance than what the code would normally require. The BC Energy Step Code eliminates the patchwork of energy efficiency standards that local governments were working with. It's rooted in a performance-based approach. But exactly what does it measure? On Sam's new house, it will measure the performance requirements for the building envelope, equipment and systems such as ventilation, heating, cooling, and boilers, and post-construction testing using a blower door test to confirm air tightness. It also identifies the building envelope efficiency metrics. Envelope means the physical barrier between the interior and the outside world, such as walls, roof, floors, windows, skylights, and doors. An energy efficient building is designed to minimize the energy needed to run all of the heating, cooling, ventilation, and hot water equipment and systems. John could relate to the losses he had in his own home. There was far too much comfortable air seeping outside for his liking. Sam was happy to put all that behind him now that he could see the multiple gains he would benefit from in his new home. So what are the five steps? And how does the BC Energy Step Code work for homes? Picture a hypothetical staircase that takes us from today's energy efficiency levels to the year 2032, when all new construction in the province must meet a net zero energy ready level of performance. Step one is enhanced compliance. This means performance testing will be used to identify whether the building meets the minimum energy efficiency performance requirements of the BC Building Code. Adhering to step one creates a quality, well-sealed building envelope. Steps two and up require higher performance levels than what the code requires. Step two buildings are 10% more efficient than buildings built to the baseline requirements of the BC Building Code. Step three new buildings are 20% more efficient. Together, steps one to three are the lower steps. Building professionals can achieve these lower steps simply by using current building designs and practices in combination with established best practices in building envelopes and systems. Step four buildings will be required to perform at least 40% better than buildings built to the baseline of the BC Building Code. To achieve the upper steps, Builders and designers will need to adopt a more integrated approach to building design. They will need to incorporate more substantial changes in layout, framing techniques, system selection, and materials. Finally, at the top of the staircase is Step 5. This represents a net zero energy ready building, the most energy efficient building that can be built today. These upper steps may require the use of more advanced building practices and expertise and energy efficient building components 
that are not yet widely available. The government recognizes that industry will need time to learn these new approaches. For that reason, until 2020, local governments may only require builders to meet the lower steps. Now, let's talk about effective R-value and nominal R-value. John kept an eye on the work progressing at his neighbor Sam's new house. But when conversations turned to R-value, he got a little confused. Nominal R-value this and effective R-value that, it was all a bit perplexing. Exactly what is R-value? And what are the differences between nominal and effective R-value? R stands for resistance. Resistance to heat flow is basically the definition of R-value. So, when we put insulation in the wall, its job is to slow down the heat from passing through it. Nominal R-value accounts for the insulation only, what R-values you put into the walls and their direct results, regardless of all the other non-energy efficient issues of the house. Effective R-value, on the other hand, takes into account all the components of the building envelope, such as studs, bats, cladding, and gypsum board, etc. The industry today is moving toward effective R-value. Thermal bridging is the main reason why the language has changed. Thermal bridging occurs when a conductive material creates a path for heat flow to bypass the insulation layer, for instance a wood or steel stud. This shortcut significantly reduces the R value of the insulation layer and lowers the overall performance of the assembly. This change to effective R value will allow the construction of durable assemblies, minimize thermal bridging, is designed to result in lower heating and cooling bills and allows homeowners to have a comfortable home. Owens Corning offers energy efficient solutions. Sam's new house is almost complete and next door, John is nearly convinced to build a new home for himself and his family. The potential energy efficiency of a new home built with Owens Corning insulation and roofing was too much for John to ignore. The Owens Corning Comfort Shield High Performance Complete Building Enclosure is a total heat, air, and moisture management system for high performance envelopes. This includes roofing, basement, basement slab, and the code board exterior air and moisture management system. Owens Corning product solutions are developed by Climate Zone to help you maximize the solutions required for any building project. The Climate Zones are Lower Mainland and Southern Vancouver Island, Zone 4, North Vancouver Island and the Interior, Zones 5 to 7A, and Zones 7B and 8 are at the north end of the province. Here is one example. To meet the requirements of Step 2 of the BC Energy Step Code in Lower Mainland and Southern Vancouver Island, Climate Zone 4, Owens Corning recommends R50 EcoTouch pink insulation for ceilings with attic space and R31 for ceilings without attic space and exposed floors. For walls above grade, we recommend R20 EcoTouch with R5 code board, and for basement walls, R12 EcoTouch insulation with R5 code board. You can also find an interactive online tool, the Effective Thermal Resistance Calculator at www.owenscorning.ca. No matter what your needs and whatever step you're on, Owens Corning products and solutions can help you adhere to the BC Energy Step Code when and where you need them.